Welcome back to our Python classes and today we will look at JSON, a JavaScript object notation on how it relates to JSON, how do we process it with, JSON, uh, with Python, how do we read the uh, JSON uh, files, how do we read actually JSON from a web, right? So it is actually, what, it, what is JSON? It is the most widely used data interchange format on the World Wide Web or, you know, well, Internet, right, if you want, but not not exactly right. But uh, so uh, it really is just a way of encoding a string. It really is just a text. It's just a string, but it has some special way of formatting this text, right? So it's a lightweight data interchange format made in 1999. Originally, there's a standard actually, right? And it's heavily inspired actually by Python. So you will see it actually it's used by uh, to exchange data between different, uh, you know, IT systems. Uh, it could be written in many different languages, right? But uh, after all, it is just text. It's just text, but formatted in a very specific way. So here on the web page, this is the official web page, json.org, is the actual specification. It's not very exciting. It just says you have object, you have some curly braces, you have some white space, you have some commas. It's a way of it's a formal definition, not very much fun unless you are actually, um, you know, like to follow the grammar rules, but I think you'll get the idea, right? So it defines what can be encoded in JSON format, basically what kind of data. And you'll see there's some things which are we are familiar already, right? Strings, objects, well, uh, but not, not, those are not going to be the kind of objects we use in Python. Array, which is going to be our list, and see some true and false. Just slightly different naming, right? So we'll see how it relates to our Python data uh, structures and we will, our goal will be to move our data from JSON into something Python understands and back, right? So go back and forth. So the goal, why was JSON invented? Because in late 1990s, early 2000s, well, uh, there are many competing data interchange formats, you know, how to, con you know, uh, I mean, simplest would be just a regular any text file or CSV. I mean, CSV is still with us, but CSV is a huge mess because CSV is not a standard. CSV is basically whatever you decide. It just has to be comma or something, maybe not comma, something else, right? It's not really standardized, right? Sometimes just a simple format is enough, right? And there's some other competition these days for JSON, such as uh, YAML files, for example, but um, JSON still remains uh, widely used. In fact, it's used by, uh, these days, by many programs to save their settings, such as Visual Studio Code, use it to store their settings. Okay, so yeah, it comes from JavaScript program language, but it's again available for, for many, many other languages. Again, I will be using our uh, using uh, using JSON API's notebook. You could use also the PI file if you want. Uh, just uh, it's easier, more convenient to use the notebook, as you shall see. So, again, we'll test our, is our kernel working? Uh, and let's run it, connecting to our kernel. Yeah, everything works great, our notebook works. So we have our notebook works, let's test it, right? Yeah, eight, okay, great. So, notice this file, right, this text, right? This is what? Something that certainly looks like, we already know, this looks like a dictionary with another dictionary inside there's a third dictionary there's a third dictionary inside um, another dictionary right and there's maybe even a list somewhere but it's mostly it looks like dictionary with dictionaries right but this actually right this is copied from a json file actually right and it actually matches the rail uh, directly matches or something we use in python right this is not always going to be the case so there's very good matching right so so, so, so JSON often matches Python data structures, but not always, right? So in this case, this was sort of, well, a happy coincidence, right? But it's not always the case. So uh, we'll need to also need to know that it's actually a, a string, right? So you could do something like this. You could copy paste into my data, right? This is a valid JSON as a string, right? We can copy it directly, right? So on this will be type my data. It will be a dictionary, right? Because why? You have curly braces, right? You have key value, key value, right? And a array. Well, again, JSON called this an array. Uh, Python, we call it a list, of course, right? So you see array. And again, what they call object, 
what Python, what, uh, what JavaScript calls objects, we call it in Python, we call it dictionary. Again, right, so type my data is going to be dictionary, right? Why? Because the upper or uh, outer curly braces are, you know, used to define dictionary, right? So I, it's, of course, type data is dictionary. Uh, we can print my data, of course, right? My data, let's get uh, my children, right? My children is a key. Children, these are just basic, these are your, these are your regular dictionary, uh, dictionary operations, right? And there's nothing special, they have, have, technically they have nothing to do with JSON right now, right? It's just basic, 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 um, uh, basic Python operations, right? I can get my first child, it's not Alice, right? But in real life, but of course, let's pretend, right? I have Alice, my first child, let's say, so, so I go, dictionary on inside the dictionary and I get the first the first item in my list right so this is gonna be of course another dictionary right right why here because I have a uh, my data consists of what consists uh, of keys right one particular key is a child children key which consists of a list right on that list is consists of two inner dictionaries like so third level right on or inception like in our levels of hierarchy on i can get my first ch child's age right right the last child's age will be more right 13 right right so on right because you know i can get also of course uh get my data my data yeah come on where's my ai assistant is sleeping Yes, first name. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Alice. Okay, right? So, key, uh, index for the list, and um, again, as a key for the inner dictionary, right? The third level. Okay, so this is basically just using Python data structure. So, when we parse, when we uh, work with JSON, we'll usually get something like this, right? So, again, there's some more operations such as get, right? You can get hobbies. Why can get hobbies? Because I have hobbies here, right? Running, skydiving, dancing. Okay, great. Right. So on and so on and so on, right? I can get hobbies. I can get hobbies from here. I can hobbies also. Uh, I can get dancing, dancing, dancing because it's my hobbies. Last item in my de hobbies. I can get uh, hobbies in a, in a. I can get hobbies in a in my data last entry or my hobbies as a third, right? Because dancing is my third item, right? Right. So last or third, right? You know, with index two. Okay, great. So, now, uh, right, so, of course, again, if you have a dictionary, right, this is a dictionary, defined dictionary, I'll get B will be 30, right? Right? It gives you 30. Okay, so, now, uh, let's transform our data into JSON, right? So, this is called serialization, a smart word, but again, you don't really, you know, don't have to worry too much about the definitions too much but the idea is this we have uh, some python data structures we want to transform them into a json string really it's going to be for transmission across a network or a file right and then afterwards we will deserialize this data and get back into a python format so okay again this is just a simply a dictionary you know j and o hobbies everything's great right so we could do this by hand, but it would be a kind of pain. So we have, luckily, we have a standard. This is standard library. You don't have to import anything else. This comes with Python. It's called JSON, right? So what we do is we are going to open up a file, right? Data file, mode W as the right file. And we are going to, instead of writing, right? We are going to supply. We are going to do dump. We are going to dump, right? So this dump is actually serialized, so serialized, serialized your data, right? And giving it to our file stream, stream right? So we, steri we, we are saying this dump uh, function or method technically, right? From a JSON, from a JSON module, right? Uh, this dump uh, method will take two parameters. It takes data, any, any Python data will do, uh, as uh, using basic beta and Python structures, and it will serialize into this right file stream. All right, and our stream will be closed, and we'll have our data. Let's test. Right, and I have data file. Oh, nice. Okay, let's check. Well, it is nice, 
But remember, this is just a string, so I converted my Python data into a textual string with some formatting, and I can send it across the internet, I can send it uh, as a file, and you know, use whatever means of transmission I want, right? Because otherwise, uh, well, there's other ways of transmitting Python data, but this is uh, the most common way, again, because multiple programming languages, uh, everybody, every serious language will understand this, will have some way of accessing. Again, Python has one of the easiest ways, but um, pretty much any language will access, will be able to read it. There are even special databases for this. But yeah, so now this is not too, not too bad, right? But it's kind of a long string, right? One line, one row, not so great, right? So nicer across multiple across multiple uh, lines row. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use it indentation. So dump has a third hidden parameter, right? This says you need to indent, you know, like similar how in Python we indent here, right? We, you know, write file will also do indentation. Let's check it out. There it is, data file indented. Isn't this nicer? You have a first name Jane. And so again, so our goal, so idea is this, so this, the goal of this whole, this, why are we doing this? So uh, this, uh, uh, so we have, uh, now we have, so now we have created a machine readable, humanly, human read and file that machine can read as well, right? So computer is not going to care about too much about these extra spaces or in the tabs. There's tabs here, right? There's spaces, right? It's not going to care, but we as humans will care, right? Because it, I hope you agree that this is much easier to read than this, right? I mean, I can't, uh, it's a pain. It's a little more pain. Again, of course, if your space is at the premium, if you need to save every last byte for saving, you know, it's a huge JSON, this will save you maybe a little bit of space, right? But for human readability, stick with this one here, right? This is much nicer. So use indent. All right. So uh, to finish this uh, early lesson of saving uh, JSON data, right? Uh, we want to... Uh, uh, let's append some more data to my dictionary. Let's append some... Uh, uh, let's, let's add another child to our uh, the dictionary, right? So... Right, I'm saying my remember my to our uh, child to our list to our list inside our dictionary, right? I have a children. I have a list which is actually a ch we accessed by children. I append uh, another child in our append child dictionary uh, to our list inside our outer 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 my data dictionary, right? So so my data is my big. Uh, dictionary wrapper, right, which calls all my data. Uh, children is a subset, right? It is basically by accessed by this key, and it, it corresponds to a list. This, so this is list. So if it's a list, we can use append, right? And we append a new entry, right? So let's check. Um, let's see. Did I add two? Ch oh, well, I had two children. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, well, yes and no, right? Well, it's completely illegal. Why? Because these are entries, remember, these are individual, these are completely unrelated dictionaries, right? Of course, I could have to, I'll probably need to push it back. Let's me, so how would I, uh, how would I remove it? Let's do pop, right? Let's do pop, right? So I will do this, right? So how would I remove it? I don't want it. Let's do that. So pop, right? Pop, right on my data. Chill out. No, I don't want pop two. I just want to show it, right? So, right? I have okay. I have three Charlie. I don't. I don't want to have two Charlies. Maybe they're twins. But okay, right? So Charlie is age fourteen, but notice this chi. So that ch Latvian letter, right? And so it's not part of Unicode, right? So that's why I'm doing it. So let's do it uh, with Charlie. And I saved it. Let's check it. And notice, right? So. It is actually correctly saved, right? This is a Unicode symbol for ch, right? Uh, so a Latvian letter, uh, basically it's like 200 something 60 or something, right? Or 270, we could check, but that's not important. Uh, Unicode for maybe, 
let's take, yeah, exactly, sure, in Wikipedia says Latvian, well, I, who else use, Lithuanians also use it, I don't know, right, I forget now, right, Latin, sure, actually, he also used, apparently, in Slovakia they used, of course, Czechoslovakia, of course, Latvia, yeah. so, quite a few, actually, Berbers, that's in Africa, right, also use it, that's great, so, um, good to know, uh, but, so, but we would like to, I mean, this will be fine for reading, but probably want to use it as the actual symbol, right? So how do you do that? We'll do it here with Unicode. So this is a little bit more extra work. So you say file name, okay? Uh, mode, of course, still writing, encoding UTF-8, right? And that's not enough. You need to also say ensure ASCII files. So you're saying for the JSON dump fun uh, function that it will make sure there's not just pure ASCII. It actually saves the Unicode as a Unicode. So we have a new entry here. You see, Charlie is now with the correct ch, uh, uh, you know, representation in a string. So again, this is just a, again. Remember, this is just a regular text string. We could read with any text file, right? Open any text editor, right? Uh, but with the JSON extension, right? I give the JSON extension to know to let it know that it is meant to be parsed by a JSON. Uh, some system which parses JSON correctly. So notice something if I do something here if I do a mistake Immediately Visual Studio Code will pick up on this right because it it, re it also it speaks JSON right it speaks JSON So if I forget a bracket right it's gonna turn red right there's a needs to be bracket right so again if I forget a comma here again That's also not legal right so um, this, uh, As long as you call the JSON file uh, Visual Studio Code will check the syntax for you. Again, notice it's not really that hard syntax to be. That's why you can learn JSON, I think, in half an hour, right? But of course, you can use it your whole life, right? Again, that's why it's so popular because easy to learn and easy to use. Okay, so now we learn how to uh, how to save JSON. In the next uh, lesson, we'll learn how to read it.